Hey everyone, let's work on making a Klein bottle in a Libre. So this is a fun little model because it's a mathematical base model whose outside surface is the same as its inside surface. It basically consists of two Mobius strips that are put together. And interestingly, it really can only actually exist in four dimensions, but we can approximate it in three dimensions with this little crossover right here. So if you haven't learned about uh, Klein bottle geometry before, it is really fun to look up and learn about. We'll make the 3D model today. And if you're interested in learning more about math, boy, do I have the source for you. If you enjoy thinking spatially about topology and 3D solids, skills specifically suited for CAD modelers, Brilliant.org is for you. I've really enjoyed the class on 3D geometry, which is a great way to deal with and understand 3D shapes. I particularly enjoy testing my visualization of 3D objects. Although I've been in the industry for a while, Brilliant.org's topics provide a necessary and important refreshment to my skills. It's not only a great resource for people looking to refresh their skills, though, it's a great supplement to your knowledge while learning as a student or even those who are just curious about the world. There's something for everyone here. As little as 10 minutes per day is all you need to keep your skills sharp and meet your goals. I often say a picture is worth a thousand words, and for the 3D spatial learner like myself, it's it must be worth even more to manipulate models in real time to see what happens. Maybe worth a whole speech of words, the dictionary, the sky's the limit. Brilliant.org has thousands of lessons and new ones added every month. I often use the phrase that you learn something new every day, and now with Brilliant, we really can. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Joko Engineering Help. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So we'll get started now. Um, I'll move to the ZX plane, create a sketch. We'll go to a circle here and make this three inches. I'm working in inches today. Of course, I change pretty frequently. So we'll deactivate the sketch. We'll grab this vertical plane, X, Y, and activate a sketch. I'll move with a vertical line. And from here, we'll actually give this a pretty short dimension, 0.25. That's enough that we can establish tangencies from and things like that. We'll grab a tangent arc. We'll grab a straight section. And lastly, another tangent arc. Actually, I shouldn't have said lastly because lastly, we're putting another line I almost forgot. And we'll give this another dimension, same thing, 0.25. An equal relation is probably better design intent than doing two dimensions if you're making a serious model. Grab a tangent here. Make sure this line and this arc are indeed tangent. We'll give this arc a dimension. Boom. Six would be pretty good. Let's grab this straight section and this straight section. We'll give this an angle of 135. We'll grab a vertical. We'll grab this uh, bottom point here and the origin. Oh, there we go. That's a good view of how we're not constrained. So. We'll grab a tangent and make sure that our arc and our line are tangent. I want to give this arc a radius, and let's give this arc a radius of 10. And we are fully constrained. Almost looked like a question mark there. So we'll deactivate the sketch. We'll ignore that because uh, we want it to be a sweep path that's open-ended. We'll grab a sweep and this guy and this guy. All right, next we'll want to do a, uh, a shell. We'll come up here and grab shell. We'll give this a standard thickness of 0.2, which is perfect. And you can see our shell, right? So say OK to that. Next, we'll want to uh, do a sketch. And just to make things a little bit easier, I think I'll add uh, an inspection precise section view. So if I apply that, in fact, maybe actually let's let 
Let's actually edit that. We'll say reverse and apply. All right. So sketching on the XY plane. We'll go to activate a sketch. There we go. Let's project. We'll do this edge and this edge with maintained association as reference figures, as well as its top and bottom edge over here. We'll say OK. And that gives us little points um, where these lines end. So we've got points down here and points up here. I'll grab a tangent arc. Let's see if we're tangent in the way that I want to be. Yeah, it's kind of a lot to ask of a of a lever, so that's fine. We'll just grab an arc and we'll make sure that it's tangent this way. We'll make sure that this endpoint and this midpoint are tangent. And now let's grab a tangent arc. And I know I can be tangent the way that I want to now. Slight concavity on this side. And then maybe we'll do a little bit more concavity. We'll end up somewhat horizontal there. And then we'll do some more. Maybe we'll make a horizontal line. And this is an important point. We started out on the outside. And the way this Klein bottle works is I want to then end on the inside or vice versa. Because that's how our thickness works as we go through this profile. So make sure that I touch off right on the inside there. There we go. Horizontal. We'll grab our arc center. Horizontal. Just like that. Now we'll say tangent. Perfect. Give this, uh, we'll give this a radius. I'll go with Oops, not a dimension, but rather a radius of 2.85. We'll give this guy a radius of 11.75. We'll give this a large radius. How about 120? All right, well, maybe that's a bit too large. Or at least I need to constrain it a bit more. So how about we come down here? In fact, maybe I'll start over here and give this a dimension of 1.5, right? A little bit smaller. We'll give this a dimension of 4.85. And now I think, just to be safe, we'll give this a dimension of 2.65. And now I think I can get away with uh, doing this as 120. There we go. Nothing flipped on me. Uh, so the question is, how are we not constrained? Well, it looks like I could give this guy a radius. So. Oh, wait, no, that has a radius of 1.75. So what isn't constrained? We'll uh, grab this dimension here. I can make a simple horizontal dimension, 0.665 maybe. And now let's work with the sketch offset. So we'll select offset here. And we'll select our figures to offset. So you can tell the thickness ends up to where we want to start on this outside and end on this inside here. Give this the same offset as we did our shell dimension. And then we can constrain that if we wish. For the purposes of this video, especially in the purposes of time, so you don't sit there watching me just constraining something that's pretty easy to do and you probably Feel the monotony of the whole thing. We'll just skip constraining and let's go to doing a revolve. Right? So we're going to say revolve. Select our axis. And there we have a Klein bottle with a few things that we need to add. Right? We have this intersection. We have to get rid of this face. So one thing that I did is I made sure to make this intersection where this wall intersects with this pipe section to be a perfectly straight uh, line. And I did that uh, to simplify our process, right? So I grab a plane, I can select my geometry, and I can select my percentage along. 
I can just choose this plane to go through, you know, a straight section and apply. Now I can sketch on this plane. I can select an edge where I would say project a sketch. We'll select this edge and maintain association. And then I choose deactivate, extrude, and I can select a length to make a cut and I cut away that wall, right? So we're still looking at the half view and there should be a complete Klein bottle if I wish. I can also choose a fillet. One, two, five, how about? And close. So that should be our Klein bottle. I can toggle this off. Um, again, it's really fun geometry to think you have something that really has the same inside and outside surface. And uh, it's a fun mathematical model if you're into studying uh, mathematical dimensions. So, hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.